I'm Mark Morris, the head of Introversion Software, and we created Prison Architect. We wanted the experience of a player playing Prison Architect to be close to the experience of being in prison. So the first 20 minutes of the game are very intense experience where you have to design a death row and, spoiler alert, you execute a prisoner within that. Prison Architect wasn't written down and described in an enormous design document to begin with. We didn't sit down and figure out that it was going to take us a certain amount of time to make it. What we decided to do was make a game about prisons, list all of the things that we could work on within a, a prison simulation, do a basic version, which included just cells, lock up, food, that kind of thing, and then carry on by updating the game every month and layering in a different system. We did that for about five years, and the decisions of which systems to layer in, by system I might mean visitation, or I might mean CCTV systems, or narcotic system, or all sorts of different bits and pieces. This was driven by the community of Prison Architect players who were signalling to us every time we put a new system in that they were happy with it, that that additional complexity was enjoyable but not overbearing for them. We did not want to build a accurate prison simulation that the Home Office could use to you know, model different future prisons. So a lot of the research was very entertaining and it came in the form of things like Prison Break and Oz and Shawshank Redemption. But as we went forward with what we were calling the alpha phase when we were selling the game and layering in these different systems, we had people from prison communities all over the world get in touch with us and comment on what we had done, made suggestions to what we might have missed. We just kind of immersed ourselves in the prison world looking for news feeds and there was an amazing stroke of luck. Chris came back from a trip to San Francisco where he visited Alcatraz, which had been one of the main inspirations for this. He hadn't slept on the plane, it's 12 hours of design for Prison Architect. He got in the taxi to take him from the airport to his home and the taxi driver turned out to be a, uh, an ex-prisoner. And Chris had a, another sort of two or three hour conversation with this guy about what prison was like from a prisoner's point of view. The player's journey through Prison Architect begins with a shock with the execution of Edward. It follows with another shock in that you think Prison Architect is very cutesy and very light because it initially looks cutesy and light but as you continue to play you will realise that the prisoners are not all behaving and the ways in which they misbehave are really quite dark. So you move from building a prison to managing your regime, deciding what security mechanisms you're going to put in it, deciding what work programmes you're going to assign your prisoners, even deciding the quality of the food that they're going to eat. It's not just about the architecture, it's not just about building the walls, it's more about the people who are within that prison cell. So we wanted to look at the backstories of some of these characters and start explaining a little bit about why they might be in prison and what your feelings are on the crimes that they committed. So in this particular example, we've got Edward busting in on his, his loving wife, finds that he's been betrayed, loses his mind over it, gets out his gun and he shoots both his wife and the, uh, the cheater dead in the bedroom. If you're going to execute somebody, which is what happens in the first 20 minutes of Prison Architect, it doesn't have any meaning for you at all if you don't understand a little bit about that person and how that person came to exist in prison. The core game of Prison Architect is about building. And before we had any of the art assets or any idea really of what the game was going to look like, we wanted to ensure that the thing that the player would be doing over and over again, the, the core game loop, if you want to call it that, we took a long time to make sure that that was inherently fun, inherently satisfying, inherently rewarding, and inherently easy. If we'd gotten that building part of the game wrong, it people just would not have played it from the start and everything else that we were able to build on top and layer it in would have failed. I think this video shows that quite well, that without 
all of the assets, all the bells and whistles, no audio, no graphics. This was what we were doing at the start. Can we make a game where building is inherently satisfying? Right from the beginning, we had it in our mind that we wanted the simulation to be very, very intricate and detailed and for players to be able to design any sort of prison that they wanted. We lent quite heavily on Minecraft. The idea that building was fun, constructing was fun, and that you could use a video game as your paintbrush, as your canvas. We kept to a very, very simple, clear art style. When you zoomed right in, you could understand exactly what was happening. So we can see we've got, what's this, five or six different prisoners in their cells with their beds. But equally, when you're zoomed out, when things are happening, I can see over here that the execution chamber doesn't have any power. I can see that this whole wing of the prison is out of power because the lights are flashing. We wanted that overview to be sort of crystal clear. And that desire conflicted with the desire to have an emotional connection to, uh, uh, to these particular characters. And that's why we needed to introduce the, the Polaroids. For me, Prison Architect isn't about the building of the prisons, it's about the characters, the people that inhabit that prison. When we were looking at all of the prison films and TV shows and, and literature, that was what would come to the fore, how people would react to being within that particular environment. And when we were working with Ryan Sumo, our artist from the Philippines, it became apparent quite early on that whilst the small sprites were very clear and crisp and able to communicate what was happening to them in a functional way. We needed something more to communicate emotionally what was going on within your prison. And Ryan, very talented man, also produced these graphic novel style images for us. I like this one in particular. I think it's an iconic image for me, certainly of a US prison with the hands like dangling out through all the bars. And we can see here, this human element of a man trapped behind an enormous steel door with nothing but that tiny little wicket to kind of peer through. I think there are several examples of Polaroids within Prison Architect that really convey the desperation and misery. This one, you can see the guy, it looks like a solitary confinement cell to me. There's no room at all, and he's completely dejected. And within PA, you might choose to put prisoners in tiny little cells, the minimum that you're allowed, or you can pay your lawyer and go even smaller than the minimum. You can reduce your cleaning bill, you can not refurbish the, the equipment. But this then is the human cost of that. And I think that these pictures are, are very important to reconnect what you're doing as a player with the emotional significance of, of, those, of those actions. You can see there Edward's looking down, he's a broken and beaten man. And if you compare those two, if you look at Edward in the middle of the frame, just looking at you, it doesn't really look like much. And you compare that with Edward in the Polaroid, you can see a lot more emotion. You can see the, the strain on the priest, his, his face on the background. And we really wanted that to um, help connect uh, with, these, with these characters. The biggest piece of advice that I could give based on what we learnt with Prison Architect is to make sure that the core game loop, the thing that the player is doing over and over and over and over again, is fun and satisfying. I think that is what we got right with, with Prison Architect. The complexity and the depth came after that and we were able to build an audience based on creating a very, very simple elementary prison. If you're sat at home making a game now, you should be able to put that game in front of a player. They should be able to play it now and have 20 or 30 minutes of fantastic experience. If you're making your game and the mid game is epic or the end game is wonderful and you've missed out on that first 10, 20 minutes, that core game, the thing the player's doing again and again, your game's not gonna succeed. So that focus for a prison architect, it was about building and the AI of the prisoners. And we had that right from the start. The biggest learning that we have done from Making Prison Architect is having the input and direct connection with your audience as early as you can in the process is the most revolutionary aspect of Prison Architect for introversion. Bringing a game to a point where it's fun and it's ready to be played, but it's by no means finished, 
and releasing that version, finding those super hardcore fans that you are really connected with. They're on absolutely the same wavelength that you're on and listening to what they're telling you about the work that you're doing and being not led by them, but inspired by them is, I think, the future of game development. It was a really incredible moment when we were nominated for a BAFTA. No game developer, I think, ever starts a project thinking this is going to be the one that receives the awards. But when you get that recognition from peers who are operating at such a high level, is just an incredible feeling. And the BAFTA goes to Prison Architect. The awards were horrible because for the first time in probably 20 years, I was really ill. Really, really ill. I mean, you can't move the BAFTAs, so I could barely get out of bed, but somehow I, I, I made it there. I didn't think we were going to win. You know, I, I really didn't expect that. The, the competition was, was too great. When it actually came to our turn, oh, it still sends a shiver down my spine now. I promised myself I wasn't going to come up, and so I was stunned I hadn't prepared a speech because you're bored of hearing that, but it's so true. Above all, I need to thank every single one of the gamers that supported us for Prison Architect and put us on the stage today. Thank you, everybody. I'm not sure how I managed to walk up there, given how, how ill I was, but um, it was absolutely, absolutely wonderful.